Hey, my name is Matt, and this is a Bible. Now, a lot of people think that the Bible is just a collection of short stories, but it's not. It's one big story. In fact, everything that's ever happened on Earth, all throughout history, is all part of one story, God's story. We call it the Big God Story. And today, I want to tell you the Big God Story. And my buddy Joel here is here to help me out. You ready? All right, here we go. In the beginning, it was dark. Um, Joel? Uh, guys, I can't... Okay. So, in the darkness, God started creating things. He started by saying, let there be light. Yes, it worked. Okay, good. Yes, and it worked for him too. There was light, and God just kept creating things, and he did it just by speaking things into existence. Like, let there be plants, and there was plants, and let there be animals, and there was animals. And the last thing he created was man. A woman and a man named Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve got to live in the Garden of Eden, a perfect paradise with God, where they had a perfect relationship with Him, and they could walk and talk with Him every day. Sadly, Adam and Eve sinned. And when sin entered the world, it separated people and God, and our relationship was broken. Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden, but not before God made a promise. He promised that one day He would send a Redeemer to restore that relationship, and that the Redeemer would be for everyone. From that day on, people began to wait the promised Savior to arrive. Well, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later, mankind had become evil and stopped following God, and God decided to destroy them with a flood. But there was one man in his family who remained righteous. His name was Noah. And Noah and his family were going to be saved by God. God told them to build an ark, which was just a giant boat. Oh, um, yeah, uh, this doesn't really look like an ark building type hammer. I think we need something a little beefier. This kind of looks like we bought it at a supermarket. You yeah, got anything? Let me see what I can find. Okay, good, yeah. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. So Noah set to work building the ark, and it was huge! And it had to have room for his whole family and for all the animals. Well, God put them all inside, and he sealed it up. And it began raining. And it rained, and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And after 40 days and 40 nights, it stopped raining! I said after 40 days and 40 nights, it stopped Joel! Stop raining! Joel! Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You think I can get a towel, please? Maybe? Just a thank you. Thanks. Excuse me real quick. <laughs> oh, okay. Much better. Anyway, after the rain stopped, God made a covenant with Noah that he would never again destroy the earth through a flood. Noah began to have grandchildren to fill the earth. In fact, Many, many years later, a man in Noah's family tree named Abraham was also given a covenant by God. God told Abraham that he would have a son and that the nation of Israel would come from his son. In fact, he told Abraham that he would have more people in his family than there are stars in the sky. And Israel would be an example to the rest of the world of what a love relationship with God looks like. And others would want to know him too. He also told Abraham that the promised Redeemer would come from his family tree. So Abraham and his wife Sarah began to wait for God to fulfill this promise. In fact, Abraham was a hundred years old when God fulfilled that promise. His son's name was Isaac. Isaac grew up and had a son named Jacob. Eventually, God changed Jacob's name to Israel, and Israel had 12 sons. One of those sons was sold into slavery to Egypt, and his name was Joseph. Joseph rose to prominence in Egypt and became the second most powerful man next to the king, who was known as Pharaoh. When there was a famine in the land or a time when there was no food, Joseph's family came looking for food in Egypt. And because he was over the storehouses, he was able to save his family. He was able to save God's people. After 400 years passed, the Egyptians turned the Israelites into their slaves. The Israelites cried out to God. No, no not, not like that. Yes, more like that. Very good. Okay, so they cried out to God, and God gave them a man named Moses, who led them out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, where they could worship God. While they were in the desert, God made a new covenant with them. He promised that He would be their God, and they would be His people. He also gave them rules to live their lives by. We call them the Ten Commandments. But because many complained after God set them free, the Israelites spent the next 40 years wandering around in the desert. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? I mean, deserts are hot and windy, so I thought that made sense. All right, that actually makes sense, but we're not going to do that. All right, 
So anyway, this whole generation grew up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, learning to be totally dependent on God. In fact, God provided food for them every day in the form of manna, which was like, it was like bread that fell from the sky. And ow, what, 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 what's happening here? I don't know what's, anyway, it, bread from the sky. Of course, yeah, I said bread from the sky and stale hard bread is falling from the sky. It was different than that for them, but God provided. Anyway, God also provided direction for them every day by putting a pillar of cloud in the sky every day and a pillar of fire that led them at night. That's about the best I got for fire. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and use our imaginations on that one, buddy. But thanks, good, good try. Anyway, Joshua led a whole new generation of Israelites, and God, after many, many years of battle, conquered the promised land that he had set aside for his people. The Israelites decided that it was time to settle down and raise families, and God provided people called judges as leaders for the Israelites. The Israelites followed God and listened to him for a while, but after a while, they decided not to follow him and rebelled. Then things got pretty bad, so they cried out to God to save them and repented. And God raised up a judge and restored them. Well, this kept happening over and over and over. Rebel, repent, restore, and on and on for years hey, and years. And, yeah, oh, hey, Joel, hi. How'd you do that? What, me? No, I thought you did You did that. Uh-uh. No? Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, this time of the judges lasted for over 450 years. God's people's disobedience continued when they demanded a king. God said, you don't need a king, I'm your king. But they said, everybody else has a king and we want one too. So God finally said okay, and he gave them Saul. Saul started out okay, but because of his pridefulness and his disobedience, God rejected him. And so God had to anoint a new king. And that's where David comes in. Oh, there. yeah. David was a humble shepherd, but he grew up to be a man after God's own heart. His son Solomon was the last, the last king of the United Tribes of Israel. Then God allowed rebellion to happen and the tribe split. The family tree of the promised redeemer was now in the south, in the tribe of Judah. The northern kingdom had some evil kings who led them into sin, and pretty quickly they were overtaken by the Assyrians. The southern kingdom did pretty well for a while, but eventually, because of their disobedience, they were taken over by the Babylonians. Soon, the city of Jerusalem, the home of God's people, was completely destroyed. I know, it's sad, but even during this time in Babylon, some of the people of Judah kept their faith alive, people like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Eventually, the Babylonians were overtaken by the Persians, and a woman named Esther, an Israelite, was made the queen of Persia. God used Esther to save his people from death. Also, the king of Persia actually paid for Nehemiah to go and rebuild Jerusalem and its city walls. Seriously, Joel, with the small hammer again? Come on. At this point in the Big God story, something strange happened. God was silent. He was still moving and working in the lives of his people, but the promise was hidden. In the opening pages of Matthew and Luke, we see that the promise that God had made all the way back at the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden had held true throughout the passage of time. And then it happened in a little town called Bethlehem. Jesus was born. The long-awaited Redeemer had finally come to earth. Jesus grew up and he lived a perfect life. He never sinned, he never did anything wrong. And at the age of 30 years old, Jesus began his ministry. He had 12 guys that walked around with him, these 12 disciples who were here to learn from him, to learn what it meant to follow him and to be loved by him. And they taught others the same thing. He healed sick people, he gave sight to the blind, he raised the dead. But Jesus' main purpose in coming to earth was to redeem and restore our relationship with him. And he did that through his death on the cross. When he died on the cross, he restored our relationship and he redeemed our sin that's not the end. It gets so much better because three days later, Jesus rose from the grave. His love for us was so great that not even death could hold it back. Jesus went back to heaven and he sent his Holy Spirit to earth to be with us. And his Holy Spirit lives with us and continues to teach us today. In fact, we get to be a part of the same big God story that all of these people were a part of so many years ago. The best part is, one day, Jesus is coming back. He's going to ride in on a white horse and announce to everyone that he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And those of us who know and love him will get to live with him forever in perfect paradise, the way it was meant to be all the way back in the beginning. And that is the big God story.